Hello everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from EVGA. This is the EVGA Z77 FTW for the win. Let's start with a closer look at the box and this is a brand new motherboard here. It's all still shrink wrap so I'm going to take the shrink wrap off. Isn't that exciting? Okay, this is a Z77 chipset motherboard. has 1155 socket. It's designed for Intel second or third generation Core i5 or i7 processors. i3, of course, will also work. Uh, so that's codename Sandy Bridge for second gen, codename Ivy Bridge for third gen Intel processors. And you do get a bit more uh, features if you go with an Ivy Bridge processor over a Sandy Bridge. But uh, here's a quick look at some of the specs here on the side. Uh, the LED on board can uh, work as a CPU temperature readout. You get the EVJ Elite tuning utility for overclocking in the operating system. 100% solid caps, uh, easy voltage read points, seven phase PWM power delivery, triple BIOS, not just two, you get three. Uh, they're using 300% the amount of gold according to the 1155 spec in the actual socket uh, for lower inductance and better power delivery. Uh, you also get some PCI Express disable switches, which is fantastic, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of testing or if you're doing a water cooling setup. Also, POS cap capacitors for higher quality, longer lifespan for power delivery for the CPU socket. Some more specs here on the back. Key features right there. I'll let you guys take a look at that if you want to go down the list. I did want to point out it's an EATX form factor, so it's a little bit wider than a typical ATX motherboard. And uh, also from EVGA, they have the 90-day step-up program, which is popular with a lot of folks, so you can check on that. Of course, you also get a three-year warranty. Let's take a look inside the box. For packaging, EVGA has gone with a clamshell container for the motherboard itself. We also have uh, lots of accessories. EVGA has just piled them in here. So first off, you get a full like practically poster size layout here of the board itself with color so that will sort of guide you through all of the uh, ins and outs of the motherboard all the connectors points out what is what here's an even larger picture of the motherboard again pointing out what's what very helpful i'm going to keep this on hand just to make sure i don't mess up when i'm doing this overview you also get the evga z77 motherboard guide inside we have a driver disc uh, it's best to go to the evga website to download the latest drivers and software that might be stored on this disk, but it's handy to have as well. There's also an EVGA case badge in there that you guys can probably see. Uh, apart from that, we have a bunch of accessories. Give me a second, I'm gonna remove packaging so you guys can see what it, all this stuff is. The rest of the accessories includes a few PCI rear panel brackets, so you get a Firewire run, one right there. You can put that on the back of your case. You also get a Super Speed USB 3.0 rear panel bracket with two USB 3.0 plugs. That routes over to a 20-pin USB 3.0 internal header. You also get a little 4 USB 2.0 plug uh, rear bracket with a couple USB 2.0 headers. So there's all your PCI brackets. Uh, you also get a couple power adapters. So this is Molex to 2 serial ATA. You also get a Molex to 3 serial ATA converter. And this one's nicely sleeved. So if you don't have enough serial ATA plugs, you should be covered with both of those. You get a couple SLI bridges since this board is... Uh, capable of uh, two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI. Uh, you get a nice SLI EVGA logoed flexible bridge right there for two-way SLI configurations. It's quite long, and let me just measure it to make sure right here. It should extend at least four spaces down on the uh, PCI Express slot, so that should cover you for the majority of two-way SLI configurations. You also get a three-way SLI bridge here. Again, uh, this is uh, sort of a semi-gloss black uh, has SLI and EVGA logos on it, but should match nicely with the case. This is the rigid PCB design, and that does provide a bit of extra support for your video cards when that's plugged in. You also get, of course, a rear panel input-output shield. This is one of the ones that has the squishy foam on the back, and that also provides some uh, EMI shielding for the I.O. at the back. Finally, you get some serial ATA cables. You get four of them in total. They all have straight plugs. Uh, these should be serial ATA Rev 2, and these should be serial ATA Rev 3. Uh, in either case, they all have, I'm sorry, these have clasps on one side, but not the other. These have clasps on both sides. And uh, in most cases, a SATA Rev 2 cable will work just fine for SATA Rev 3. And I should point out, these are flat cables here. These are rounded. 
Now we're taking a look at the motherboard itself, starting off with the back, just so you guys can see the PCB. It is a flat black, uh, it looks quite nice. Also all of the uh, cooling on the board, so the heat sinks for here for the power delivery as well as down here for the chipset, all mounted with Phillips head screws, so those are easily removable. You don't have to use the annoying plastic push pins. Back here at the front of the board, I'm going to start out by pointing out the fan headers. You do get a total of seven. They're all four pin PWM hand fan headers. So you get, of course, a CPU fan header that's right there up at the top. Another fan header over here on the left side, as well as on the front uh, top right. Another fan header right down here below the power delivery. Another fan header over here on the right side above the serial ATA ports. That one is currently plugged into the uh, fan that's cooling the Z77 chipset heatsink. Bear in mind, uh, this fan does uh, spin at fairly low RPM, so it will stay uh, fairly quiet as compared to some older chipset fans, which tend to get a little bit loud. Uh, also, fan headers down here at the bottom, so I believe that covers all, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two more down there at the bottom, so that's seven total four-pin fan headers. Next up, we're going to talk about the board in detail. I'm going to start down here in the lower right-hand side. And um, I'm going to get my pen so I can point at stuff. Okay, starting off with the BIOS selector switch right there. It's a three-way switch, so one, two, three. This board actually has three BIOSes. Uh, so you get one right there that's actually a removable chip, and then you got two right above it. Also little LEDs next to these that are going to indicate which BIOS you're currently on. So nice little feature right there. You might notice this pinout right there, it's called dark mode, and that's uh, simply a little jumper. You can switch that over. That will disable all of the LEDs on the board, so if you're not into LEDs, you can simply turn them off with that little jumper. Uh, right down here next to the BIOS switch, you have your front panel connectors. They are color-coded co to help you figure out which ones are which. Next to that, you have a USB 3.0 header. That's a 20-pin. All the little headers on the board, uh, for the most part, have these little rubber caps on them that are labeled, so that uh, makes it very easy to tell which is which. But there's your USB 3.0, the aforementioned 4-pin PWM fan headers. I also get a 1394. That's for FireWire. A couple more USB 2.0s right there, and that's... Uh, for USB 2.0. Each of those will power two USB 2.0s. I uh, also get a uh, speaker mounted directly to the board right there so you can hear your post beeps. Uh, and then you, uh, you'll notice right here which is a PCI Express 6-pin power connector. Let me just tilt this ever so slightly so you guys can get a closer look at that. Now that's going to provide additional power to the PCI Express lanes. So particularly if you're going with uh, two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI or Crossfire X configurations, uh, you're going to want to deliver a bit of extra power. Now there's actually one down here at the bottom. There's another that is right up here above uh, the PCI Express ports, all the way up there. And um, you can actually plug in one or the other of those. You don't necessarily need to plug in both. Again, it's supplemental power. It's not going to be needed in all situations. But depending on the cable configuration and your cable management, uh, you can choose which one of those best suits your needs, and uh, it's kind of nice to have that option. Uh, moving on to the audio, we have the Realtek ALC898 uh, codec chip, which is right there. That's giving you 7.1 channel audio support. You have a front panel audio header right there, as well as SPDIF right next to it, uh, so you can connect that to enable your front panel mic and headphone ports. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about PCI Express, and that's one of the main features of this board because uh, if you're familiar with PCI Express lanes and the amount of bandwidth that's available between PCI Express ports and the CPU, uh, you might know that uh, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processors give you 16 PCI Express lanes. Sandy Bridge gives you PCI Express Gen 2, Ivy Bridge gives you PCI Express Gen 3, which is more efficient and effectively doubles the bandwidth. So uh, if you're going with an Ivy Bridge chip, you're going to get actually uh, PCI Express Gen 3 out of all uh, five of these red PCI Express slots. You'll notice they're all full length, 16x. Uh, you actually can run it 16 or 8x at the top one here, 16 or 8x on the third slot right here, 8x on the fourth, 16 or 8x on the fifth, and then down here at the seventh you can get PCI Express 8x. And if uh, NVIDIA requires at least 8x compatibility or, or connectivity uh, for SLI support, so that's how you get the uh, well, four-way SLI, three-way SLI support from this board. And uh, if you're looking at all those and saying, well, that's too many, you only get 16 actually from the Ivy Ridge chip, that's because they've actually put a PLX chip. It resides underneath uh, the heatsink there for the Z77 chipset, so that's actually going to provide uh, 
well, it's a multiplexing chip, but it's going to give you a bunch more PCI Express lanes, and that's how they've enabled all those. Specifically, it's the PEX8747 Gen 3 switch. Finally, you get one single speed uh, or X1 PCI Express Gen 2 port right there, so if you have an add-on card, you can drop that in. And also, the layout here gives you the options for various configurations. Um, so if you're going with two uh, slot cards, uh, that's how you'll set up four-way. And then if you, you still have the capability to do two-way, if you're going to go with the three-slot card, but lots of different options for that. So great job on the PCI Express there, EVGA. Moving on to the uh, chipset fan uh, chipset fan and heatsink assembly. That's right there. you got the Z77 for the Win logo as well as the EVGA logo on that. It's got kind of a brush, brushed metal finish. It looks, looks pretty nice. Uh, that's controlling a few things, the Z77 chipset, that is, including some of these serial ATA ports. So here's your serial ATA. That's where you're going to connect hard drives, SSDs, optical drives, that sort of thing. Uh, the red ports right here are SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. Uh, the far right ones here are actually controlled by a Marvell chip. The rest are controlled by the Z77 chipset, so there's your native SATA 6G right there, and that's where you're going to get the best performance, although it's really only a tick or two behind uh, the supplemental Marvell controller. Uh, also, you get four SATA Revision 2, 3 gigabits per second ports right there in the black ports. Also, while I'm looking at the side of the board here, I'm going to move over to the power connector. 24-pin main motherboard power connector is right there, and look at that. It's a right-angle connector. It doesn't point straight up. It points to the side, and... If you're going to, if you've plugged in the big old power connectors right there, that's a great feature to have. They've even given you a little bit of uh, rubber covering right there to cover the leads where they actually uh, angle over and connect to the board. So another nice feature on the board. Let me just flip this back upright. And uh, actually one other feature right here are the uh, PCI Express on-off switches that I mentioned on the retail box. So you notice one through five right there. Those correspond to the red uh, PCI Express uh, slots right there. And uh, that's going to help for troubleshooting. So for instance, let's say you set up a four-way SLI configuration and you want to test one, two, three, and four cards. Well, you can set those all up. Just simply turn the PCI Express lanes off to test that. Also for water cooling, that's incredibly helpful because if you've set up a water cooling loop, it's really a pain in the butt to remove those cards. Uh, so if you've set that up, you can simply switch those on and off for troubleshooting or again, uh, various benchmarking configurations. Moving up the side of the board, I already mentioned the 24-pin uh, right-angled uh, main motherboard power connector. Above that, you have your debug LED. That also functions as a CPU temperature monitor, so when it's not uh, going through post, that will default and tell you the temperature that your CPU is at. Above that, you have surface-mounted reset and power buttons right there, so especially if you're doing an outside-of-the-box build, those are very helpful. You also have a surface-mounted clear CMOS button. Above that is your uh, one of the other 4-pin uh, fan headers that I mentioned. And then right up here at the very top, which is almost blocked by the uh, dim slots, but you can sort of see that, that is your, are your voltage read points. And they have actually give you pinouts for those, so no, no soldering is needed. You just need some uh, voltage leads to connect to those and connect to a multimeter, and then you can get a real detailed voltage measurement. Uh, below that, of course, is your, are your DIMM slots. Uh, again, DDR3 memory supports dual channel from uh, the IMC on your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor, giving you a nice sticker right here that will indicate how do you want to plug those in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you are going to go with single channel, uh, you will want to plug that in in slot 2, the red slot right there. <clears throat> if you're going to go with dual channel, you want to do slots 2 and 4. Uh, and that is nice because... Oops, sorry, I ripped, ripped the sticker. Uh, because if you are just going to be installing two sticks of RAM, it gives you a little bit more spacing away from the CPU socket. Uh, so especially if you're using a larger aftermarket cooler, you'll have less chance of conflicting with those dim slots. But those are spaced out fairly well anyway, according to the LGA 1155 spec. So you shouldn't have much problem, but uh, of course, always double check your aftermarket CPU heatsink fan to make sure that the, the dimensions are within spec. There's your LGA 1155 socket. I'm going to remove the cover really quick just so you guys can take a look. Again, they're using three times the amount of gold in that socket, so that's uh, going to improve uh, the performance of the CPU, especially if you're going to be overclocking. Also, the socket they've used has a nice kind of chrome plating on it. Uh, surrounding that, you have your power delivery, so you can see the... Uh, uh, you can see the POS caps right there on the right. You can also see the chokes with the EVGA logo on that. 
and then you have a nice beefy black heat sink which is going on top of your MOSFETs which are typically the hottest part of the power delivery. Uh, speaking of power delivery, you get actually two 8-pin supplemental CPU power connectors up here at the top. You only need to plug in one, but if you are going to go for some high level overclocks and your power supply has it, you can plug in a second 8-pin power connector right here that will give you additional power for the power delivery area to the CPU. Uh, that about does it for the front of the motherboard here. We're going to move on to the I.O. ports, which are right here. So starting on the left side, uh, we have a couple of USB 2.0 ports, actually lots of USB 2.0, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 USB 2.0 total. Uh, there's an external clear CMOS button right there. You have a PS2 connector there for a keyboard, which a lot of people still like to use uh, if you're using a nice, say, mechanical PS2 keyboard uh, that supports stuff like end key rollover. Uh, you still have your PS2 connector. Uh, a couple more eSATA ports right there. Uh, four USB 3.0 ports. You get dual gigabit NICs. You also have a mini display port right there, and that is a display out for the integrated GPU in your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor. So uh, using sold separately adapters, you can configure that for various uh, digital outputs. Um, and then that also enables uh, support for stuff like uh, Lucid MVP, I'm sorry, uh, Virtue MVP by Lucid, uh, which will allow you to use both the iGPU in your processor as well as discrete graphics, as well as switching back and forth between those, as well as some other functions that you guys can check out if you want to look up a little bit more information on Lucid Virtue MVP. Finally, you have your uh, audio outs right there on the right. Again, 7.1 channel audio supported. You also have your mic input right there. Finally, you have a Toslink optical audio out. And that just about wraps it up for this video. Once again, this has been the EVGA Z77 FTW for the win motherboard featuring the Z77 chipset and the 1155 socket for Intel second and third gen core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can check out more on our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.